Right. It seems like everyone is in. So um, let me give you a brief introduction. My name is Li Zhu, LZ for short, and I'm a representative from BNB Chain as an ecosystem coordinator. So today our sharing will be mainly on the ecosystem on BNB Chain and how we help projects to achieve their maximum potential. So without further ado, let's go for it. Simple introduction, what is BNB Chain? So BNB Chain is a blockchain with full-fledged environment for developing high-performance decentralized apps. It was built for cross-chain comp cross compatibility with BNB Chain, the beacon chain, to ensure that users get the best of both worlds. So if you could see the diagram on the right, it shows a main BSC chain, which is already live, and it's been live for about a year and a half now. So this is the new technical roadmap announced a couple months back for 2022. And there will be application-specific chains and also partition chains. So instead of just being a mainnet, a blockchain, we are envisioning to be a blockchain of blockchains, network of networks. So um, yeah, um, BSC will be going multi-chain. So a very brief introduction, right? So what, what's the mission, vision, and goal? So BSC mission is always to be able to provide this full-fledged environment, very conducive for developers, for them to build high-performance decentralized applications. The vision, we aim to be, we aim to build a crushing financial infrastructure that unlocks the IOV. And the goal, accelerate adoption of digital assets and blockchain technology. As we always say, I think our main goal is actually to bring in the next 1 billion users. So about PMB chain, um, you know, there is many different misunderstandings and conceptions about PMB chain. So I'd like to clear it up. So mainly, PMB chain is a decentralized platform, a blockchain that is open for all to build on. So there is a couple of things, you know, we've learned over the one and the past one and a half year of experience. We have built a very, very um, core infrastructure set that is able to stand up to anything. So we are secured and we are able to, you know, provide high performance multi chains to different applications to fit the needs. Also, we have seen quite powerful DeFi innovations over the past year and a half. And of course, um, being an EVM compatible chain, we are interoperable and composable. So just sharing some key milestones that has opened, like, you know, that has been, we have been through for the past year and a half. So in year 2022, about quarter two, quarter three, August, we actually are in the testnet stage. So um, the first projects were in development, we were building up infrastructure and all. So fast forward, in year 2021, there was a DeFi summer. So after the DeFi summer, um, BSC actually grew really quickly. So as you can see by 2021 Q1, we are actually doing about 60% of the transaction volume on Ethereum. And fast forward to Q2, just three months later, we are actually doing 2.6 times multiple of Ethereum. So um, year 2022 is very special for us, right? We just announced the rebranding. We have announced the setup of a BS BNB foundation and so you have also announced the multi-chain infrastructure which i've just showed in the beginning so real world applications of course are being built on here so where we currently stand we are doing about 1.5 million daily active users which is about a 4.9 times multiple of ethereum and as it stands now we are doing about 5 million transactions a day and that's about a 4.4 time multiple as well. So common question we get, why build on BNB chain? So um, this numbers need some updating, right? So we recently crossed 2.5 billion transactions and our daily all time high was actually 16.26 million transactions 
and that was on 25th November last year. So currently, um, we have over 100 million users in terms of wallet addresses. And at all time high, it was about a 2.27 million daily active users. It was on the 1st December of 2022, 2021, sorry. So right now, we are seeing about $17 billion in TVL across all the DEXs and all the apps on BSC. So of course, um, Twitter followers, we are actually doing a bit better than now. So we have over 2 million Twitter followers. Um, yeah, and number of projects, we are actually seeing over 1.2K projects. So um, of course, um, projects that are grants, like grants provided or invested by the BNB Growth Fund, we have over 40 of them that is building on BSC right now. So um, before we go into deeper details, right, I would like to introduce to you what is the most valuable builder program. So the MVB program, for short, is the flagship accelerator under the BMB $1 billion growth fund that aims to better support startups, both builders and developers growing into the stable, reliable, and valuable parts of the crypto ecosystem. So um, we have been through four different iterations. So the first MVB started actually in March 2021. So it lasted for about a month and a half, and it is really amazing. So we will be going to the specific details after this as well. So currently, we are in the fourth season of MVB program. Yep, so here's some quick tidbits for the MVB program breakdown. So in the first season, we have actually over 650, 650 applicants from all around the world in multiple categories, right? So DeFi, NFT, gaming, infrastructure options, lending, etc. So after a month, of, a month and a half of selective, rigorous selection, we have identified Autofarm, Beefy Finance, and Pancake Barney these three projects as the um, finalists for this season. So two of which, Auto Farm and Beefy, they are actually listed on Binance.com now. And the third, um, Pancake Barney, they received a $1.6 million seed round investment from Binance Labs. So fast forward to like a month later, right? We started the second season of MVP. So back then, um, Axie Infinity was a hit. It was a massive hit. So we are, we started to see more games and more different like you know innovations in the area. So of which we have received over five hundred applicants, and you know um, because of that, I think um, the shortlisted projects achieved more than five hundred thousand active users addresses with like over sixteen billion dollars transacted within the season itself. At time of publishing, I think. The top 20 projects accounts for about top like you know maybe like 30 percent or 20 percent of like all daily transactor volume so the bsc network at that point of time achieved a new all-time high in weekly, weekly active users and also daily active users currently i think um as you know bsc networks processes more than you know about 440 percent more transactions than ethereum so the third season, we actually ended this in December last year. So of which we have listed, um, not listed, but you know, um, the top 10 finalists, they are all very key contributors to the ecosystem. And you may have recognized some locals here. So this brings us here, right? MVP4. So MVP4 is currently ongoing. And we have, we have like, um, you know, um, multiple, projects that are registering for it now. So if you are a project now, um, don't, there's nothing to fret because the applications are still open. I'll be linking them in the videos afterwards. So um, of course, sharing some of the key focuses we have for this season. Um, Web3 infrastructure is, infrastructure is something that we are always looking out for. So it's to strength, strengthen the critical infrastructure and provide services to satisfy large scale businesses, you know, um, it could be security tooling, API provisioning and all. 
So also, I'd like to introduce you to this term, metaphy. Metaphy is this term that we came up with. So it's an umbrella term for social fi, game fi, metaverses, and also like NFT projects, DeFi. I think having all of them into one, it makes more sense because it, it is actually complementary to each other. So of course, the third thing we're looking out for, advanced DeFi Legos. So cross-chain, DeFi composition, privacy T exports, flashports, bring like you know, bridging of the C5, centralized finance and decentralized finance together, things like that. Yeah. So um tapping a little bit into each category. So um this is what you mean by infrastructure. So you know, in a blockchain, there's decentralized settlement, um, having decentralized finance as a module, capitalization of NFTs. So when we go towards gaming, um, it could be having a virtual social platform. It could be having a create to play um, modules within the game itself, content creation as well. So for example, a decentralized Twitch. So of course, um, moving on to data, I think um, this is quite a bottleneck for many people because they are still relying on centralized servers. Having 5G cloud, high speed and key storage networks on the blockchain in Web3, it will make a lot of more sense. So, of course, um, being in this meta world that we are, um, interactiveness is a very key component. So we would like to see some VR, AR technology being implemented in Web3. Um, some people are exper experimenting with holographic projections, having gaming engines done. I think all these are very interesting as well. So tapping a bit on meta -fi. So um, like I said, it's a combination of DeFi, gaming, metaverses, and also NFTs. So essentially combining all of this, um, there might be sparks that we, we are not expecting. So advanced DeFi Lego, this is very interesting. So as we know, we are all on the settlement layer, BNB chain network, Ethereum, other layer ones, layer twos that you think of. I think we are the base blockchain and people are actually building on the settlement layer. So we can move on to the asset layer. So on BNB chain itself, of course we have BNB. We have other BP20 tokens, which is essentially our fungible tokens. Um, having NFTs, as it may commonly known, so non-fungible tokens, they come in standards in BP721, BP1155, things like that. So rep assets, we are seeing that a lot. So for example, it's the BBTC issued by Binance.com. So rep Binance tokens. Red Bitcoin tokens. Um, we are starting to see trends that people are tokenizing real world assets. For example, real estate, or you know, um, commodities. And of course, stable coins is a key part of this ecosystem. People need a fiat pack token to refer to in trades. Moving up, I think uh, application layer is very important. So this is where our DeFi dApps comes in, decentralized applications. So borrowing and lending, examples of this would be like Venus protocol. So Venus is a lending protocol that does essentially financing within this crypto web tree world. So having derivatives, synthetics, insurance protocols, DEXs, decentralized exchanges like BankXWAP, having prediction markets and payment systems. This is application layers where we think um, you have to provide real world utility to the users to mimic this financial world that is building within our ecosystem. So we moving up, we will be at the aggregation layer. So aggregation layer, um, we will have the EU aggregators like the three MVP winners, uh, MVP one winners that we have announced. Um, yeah, so multi protocol interfaces and of course non custodial wallets. So um, this is a very brief breakdown of what we think is this advanced DeFi Lego components. Right, so the value of MVP. In this MVP program, we have an overarching MVP community board. The objective is really simple, right? To help projects realize their full potential and for every project to contribute and grow this ecosystem together. So we have mentors, coaches. They are part of this voting committee that decides who gets 
assessments and all. And of course, a VC, VC alliance that actually helps invest, advise, help projects, you know, to get an educational system. So a very brief breakdown. So in our one year and a half on doing this ecosystem, I think we have realized many projects. Why are they succeeding? Why are they failing? So this is a very brief breakdown of why we think um, the most common startup failures within Web3 world. So people are thinking that it's quite different in the Web2 Web3 world because Web2, it's harder to get your ideas validated. It's harder to waste funds, but there is a, a abundance of funds within Web3. So uh, the VCs and the investors are quite enthusiastic in funding projects, even though they may be unproven or people have not done the right product market feed testing and all. So um, the first thing, there is no market need. So imagine I could be coming out with a protocol that has the best teams available, like it's being done by the best teams available, but there are no users that need to put up. Do you think that product will work? I am not too sure. So um, this is something very important. Product market fit is a key component of, of all startups, be it Web2, Web3. So I think it's better for projects and teams to actually think through. Is there a real need for the product? So other than that, I think products get outcompeted. Web3 promotes transparency, open source, you know, um, cultures like that. So it is not difficult or it is not rare to see projects copying the codes or more well-known forking, forking the codes from other projects that are doing well and launching their own projects on a new chain, on the existing chain, anything. So a project, a, a team, a project, a startup must be agile and adapting to different circumstances and make sure that they are in the competition in the race. Um, technical flaws, security breaches, I think they are somewhat under one category. This is very common, unfortunately, because Web3 is still fairly much immature. So the technical people are always looking for exploits potential vulnerabilities for them to attack, you know, at different vectors. Yeah, so um, we always promote high security awareness and we we'll like every project, every team that is building on BNB chain to be very conscious of what's happening. So um, the next point will be flawed business model. I think these falls under um, a bit of like the research and team background because funds, like I said, is in abundance. So they may not think of a very lean model where they will be able to sustain themselves through hard times for like three months, four months, you know? So um, I think a proper roadmap, proper runway planning will be very important for every project, every startup to consider. Legal challenges. I think this is very prevalent in this ecosystem because we are still fairly unregulated at this point of time. So people are using decentralization as a front for potential um, malicious activities like, you know, um, washing of funds and all. So I think it's something to be considered. And we have to be agile in this fund as well because as more legal challenges present themselves, the team must be able to, you know, adapt to that quickly and also come up with a counter solution. Something to note is that sometimes the teams are not right for the project. Founder mismatch, missing expertise, improper people management. I think all this also plays a part in common startup failures. Flop business model also links to a point that projects tends to run off money. So we see some projects doing double raises, triple raises, which is not very ideal in this descent like Web3 world because um, unless there is strategic value, it is typically a way of the founders offloading tokens. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think this pretty much covers everything. So MVB program also promotes this five pillar of incubation that we think is very important for every project to understand. First one, of course, product design, having proper product UX, tokenomics knowledge, everything will play a part in this to make a product user-friendly and to fit the needs actually. So in this very technological advanced ecosystem, I think, um, we should be focusing on technical um, technical expertise and also development skills. Other than that, I think we should go into operations. Operations involves marketing concern, content, user growth, daily product operations. I think this is really important. Of course, security as well, like I've mentioned earlier, and investments. Investments would go towards the VC guiding projects and also fundraising support. So how this program goes, I think, there's a monthly stars portion. So applicants who register for the program, um, we will be looking through every single project and picking the best out of them. So for this, out of this incubation pool, we are looking for monthly stars. So monthly stars essentially in this round, they actually, they will be offered an investment note from team. So MVB top players will be the top projects of the season. So for this MVB four case, it will be the season from March, from January to April. And of course, after the event, there will be recaps, there will be Twitter interactions for the projects. And um, most probably there will be a demo day as well. Right. So this is actually done for the MP3. So um, maybe once or twice a month, there are actually different events held by the team. So we hold fireside chats, we hold master classes, and we invite domain experts in what they're doing to share their expertise with the different projects. Industrial networking is something that we heavily promote as well, because I don't think any project can survive alone in this Web3 ecosystem. We encourage projects to foster relationships outside within BSC, with the outside of BSC as well, because it will actually promote different interactions and we'll see different chemistry being born out of that. One-to-one -one mentorship. So um, later in the slides, I'll be able to share this, um, you know, this overarching community members and projects are able to approach them for support and advice. Of course, at the end of the event, we have a demo day as well to essentially give them, give the projects a chance and opportunity to present a project to the BSC Growth Fund, to Binance Labs, to top tier VCs and investors. Yep, so here comes to the point um, most people will be interested in, having the incentives and benefits for the MVP monthly stars and also top players. So in our ecosystem, we heavily promote projects that are performing well on their own. And I think it's very important to provide them marketing support. So they are potentially eligible for marketing support at the PNB chain community and from the greater Binance ecosystem. Meaning from that, I think we have different partners that we're working closely together. For example, Binance NFTs, um, Binance Pay. I think these are some partners that we can help coordinate and make this make the project more interoperable with different components. The projects themselves will be able to assess the 100 million talent development fund, 
100 million liquidity incentive program, 300 million builder and incubation program, and 500 million dollars investment program. So of course, um, we will be helping Liasing with different partners. We could get them discounts on security audits. We could help them get involved more with the incubation and mentoring program. So for the MVP top players, they are essentially getting the same thing. So there'll be rewards, there'll be investment offers, there'll be different um, different industrial exposure for them to get the right context in the right expertise in space. So this is actually the MetaFi investment strategy towards the 1 billion users I mentioned. So in this, yeah, so this is the essentially what we are envisioning the landscape to be. So in MVP4, I did say that there is actually investments involved. So um, if let's say the top players in this round, the first project will be able to get a million dollars investment offer. And of course, the third will be getting like 250K investment offer as well. So from the MVP tree, we have seen some success stories. So of course, most, most projects comes to us and the first question will be about listing. So we have actually worked quite closely with Binance.com to fast track listing applications of promising projects within the MVP program. So here are some projects that got listed on Binance.com. We have Trenches, Mobox, Bakery Swap, Burger Swap, Alpaca Finance, Harvest Finance, Auto Farm, Beefy, Binary X, and many more. So of course, investment offers. We have invested in MCDEX under 1 billion growth fund. We have Binance Labs has announced investments for BuySwap, a MVB2 win, MVB winner. They have led a round for Mount, which is Pancake Swap's parent company. Dairy Protocol also secures an investment under the BSC 1 billion growth fund. And U Network, one of the MBP participants, also closes a 30 million Series A round. And the liquidity incentive, I think. We have provided Dairy Protocol, MCDEX, Central Games, Wool Trades, and they are they have all benefited from this MVB BNB chain 100 million liquidity incentive program. So here are some of the members on our MVB community. We see domain experts, KOLs within all regions of this space. And they have been quite proactive in helping us with the master classes, with lessons for the projects to learn from. And of course, it doesn't stop here. So, right, before I go further, let me show you a very quick ecosystem landscape. So this is a little from quite a while back, so it's not really updated. But we have tons of lending protocols, wallets, stable coins, yield farming platforms, launch beds, cross chain networks, assets, insurance protocols, options, margin and future platforms, payment platforms, tooling and infrastructure projects, oracle systems, and also derivatives. DEXs, I think we are seeing quite a bit of it. So um, the most well-known of us pancakes are, and we do have quite a couple as well. NFT gaming is actually one of our core competencies, you know. So about 50% of daily transactions are contributed by NFT projects and game five projects. So the list is so much more exhaustive of, like outside of this. So I encourage you to take your time and look through our ecosystem. So I am at the last stage now. So this is essentially our social media. We have went through a rebranding. So we are currently BMB chain. So here are the updated links. If you, you could join if you want. Cool. So I think I'm at the last of my slides.
thank you so much for listening in. So I will take any questions if there are any. So I actually got a question from XCLRER. How can I start a structured learning or career to focus on PMBK? Thank you for any source of information so I can support Binance Chain in the future. So just a small correction there. We are BNB Chain now. So BNB Chain is not associated with Binance. The question though, how can we start a structured learning or career to focus on BNB Chain? I think this is a great question. So there's multiple ways you could play a part in this role, a role in this ecosystem. You could be having, I mean, you could be, if you're interested in a career with BNB Chain, I think you could look out for the job listings that we'll be pushing out soon, I think. The team is expanding and I think we are constantly growing and we'll need more talented people to join us as well to help grow this ecosystem. You could also play a part as a, um, you know, as a builder on, BS, on BNB chain itself. So if you're involved in any projects, I think it's great to start there, you know, um, maybe uh, look through the skill sets that you have. And if it's valuable in this Web3 ecosystem, I think you could try, you know, approaching different Web3 projects be it on BNB chain or not, I think it doesn't matter. So um, contributing there will be a good start to that as well. So we also got some comments. Can you put French subtitles for the next videos? It will be easier for me to understand and I'm sure many people around the world will speak French. Um, thank you, Munadi. I think that's an amazing su um, suggestion. I will speak to the marketing team about that. Yeah. No worries. So yeah, after the rebranding, I think um, the motto is actually to be ambition is actually beyond Binance now. So yeah. So I don't think we are getting any more questions. Oh, right. Does BNB chain has a website with job bots? Um, we do have a website with Dropbots. Um, I would have to get a link for that. So um, do keep a lookout for that. I think we'll be doing some promotions really soon. Of course, if you're interested to work with projects, I think that's valuable as well. Right, it seems like we're not getting any more questions. So if that's the case, I think um, I think I wish everyone had to have a great weekend and I will see you really soon. Thank you so much for attending this session.